Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. I don't know what your relationship is with Trump. Do you have one? Uh, no, I've never actually met Trump. Okay. I met Trump Jr. Trump Jr. Okay. Do you guys have a relationship? Are you cool? Text um, each other? Yeah, pretty, I'm, I mean, like, we don't we don't fall asleep on the phone together or anything like that. But, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Good, good, good <laughs> for know, that. I've, I've talked talk, I've, I've, I've talk to him a couple times. Okay. So, yeah. so um, I mean, let's go, let's step back a second even. When the NRA came out and supported Trump and all that kind of stuff, right, and said, they just anointed him, this is going to be like our president and he's a gun guy. Where were you at on that? Because I remember um, being at like SHOT Show or something, like what the, where did this, how'd this happen? Oh, uh, so where am I at with Trump now? Yeah, where were you at when the NRA anointed him and then where, where were you when he's the mm. one that came out and did this? How did that, I did was that change? With Trump. I was I was fine with Trump initially, still very much into them for the most part. But what I will say is that he's demonstrated a lot of ignorance on the issue. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think with, with Trump, like the way he saw it, like I said, I can't speak for him. I'm not him. But I, from my perception is he saw it as a piece of plastic. Therefore, it's not a gun. Therefore, I can do whatever I want with it. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. He's getting he was getting a lot of flack. He was getting a lot of pushback about the bump stock thing. He thought he could throw it. He thought he could throw the other side of bone. Yeah. And so it was a piece of plastic and nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. And so people have to understand just because people are Republicans does not mean that they are gun people. Right. And so what ends up happening, and then not only that, they or, the, really or because they say they're gun, gun people, people doesn't mean they understand the Second Amendment or the you know or or what that means. So we live this, right? So we follow it extremely closely. A lot of those guys in Congress don't, mm -hmm. right? You know, they they have their own motivations, they have their own agendas. Now it is left to us to be as loud as possible to make them hear us. But for the most part, they, they're largely ignorant on firearms. They don't know very much about them. And to be honest with you, I think their position on them is rather apathetic. I think it's contingent on whether or not it allows them to continue to hold on to their constituency. As long as it continues to do that, they're, they're pro 2 way. I think the moment that they're in a position where they can get away from doing that and it would garner them another, another, uh, another group of constituents, they'll do that in a heartbeat. I think that's what we need to understand about these politicians is that they are representatives that we elected mm -hmm. and we need to hold them accountable and hold them to the fire because they will flip flop to whatever event, whatever uh, serves to their advantage. Yeah. Who do you think is giving Trump information about guns? He obviously doesn't know anything about it. He thinks that like to think that the bump stock thing was just you know, plastic. Who's giving him information? I have not the slightest clue. Okay. I would assume, I mean, because because like even take even take the most recent statement, which I tweeted about about suppressors, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To me, again, that's that's no different than the bomb stock thing. I think this is a man who largely doesn't know that much about firearms, and saw a suppressor and thought that's not a gun, therefore not protected under the Second Amendment. I don't like him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what? Which is, but it's it's ironic because then his because his son was <laughs> one of the biggest voices for pushing the Hearing Protection Act. Mm -hmm. You know, so that would, which goes to tell you there's a disconnect of information, and so from that perspective, what we have to understand when it comes to when it comes to is he is not a gun guy. Mm -hmm. He's not, and so in his mind, he has he kind of has a very myopic view of the Second Amendment from the standpoint that it only applies to guns. That's it. I think when it comes to the matter or the issue of guns, I don't think we have anything to worry about. However, when it comes to ancillary aspects of firearms, when it comes to bump stocks, suppressors, things of that nature, then I think we, that's where things get a little dicey with respect to Trump. Because, like I said before, he's not he's not a, he's not a gun guy. Mm -hmm. And so the, the level of depth that we you and I would get into with respect to the Second Amendment wouldn't uh, is not going to be to the same degree that Trump would. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very surface level. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever asked Junior like, dude, what's up with your old man? You know, can you talk to him? No, nah, we not, we not. I mean, like I said, I've spoken to him, but we ain't that cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's like if I was talking to him, that's the one conversation I want to have. I mean, I'm a New Yorker, yeah. so I understand how like New Yorkers think. You have you have to like get to the meat. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, like like I said, I I don't have a direct line of communication with right. Junior. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all on our own when it comes to that. And I think that's an unfortunate reality. Uh, some of us realize that there's lots of people out there that were very happy for, for Trump to be the guy. I think ultimately, you know, we all made that those decisions and, and people voted for him or didn't. You know, lots of gun guys did vote for him and, yeah. and we're disappointed. Yeah. Uh, I'm still... Would I be different? No. No, me neither. Yeah. I, I don't want... I wouldn't want Hillary up there. Um <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> that would be a, a lot worse situation. Every single opportunity here, I think we would have taken huge losses. The problem is here that every time something happens, we're kind of like backsliding a little bit, trying to appease people. Um, I think the thing is, is like we, the Second Amendment, I look at the Second Amendment as, as a, like a castle, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the problem with it being a castle is that it doesn't matter. Like people always like to say about the NRA, you know, they're always playing defense. They kind of have to. That's just the nature of defending the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, a, it's a castle that's constantly under attack. And it's hard to mount an offensive attack when you're constantly having to defend the structure that you have. There's the, the, the people on the other side of this thing in the middle of an open field and they can just throw rocks all day long. So there's really nothing for them to have to defend for, to ever fall back on a defensive position, which is why I think we've got to be vigilant as a, as a, as a, as a community in terms of defending this right. And, and unfortunately, we, there's no rest. Mm -hmm. We do not get to rest. And if you look every single time that we have rested, we get caught up, we get caught blindsided. Yeah.